everyone, this is Easy Peasy here, and this is going to be another episode in my beginning Bible study series. Today's scripture reference is from John chapter 3, verses 1 through 21. And um, this is a pretty famous passage of scripture. You may be familiar with it. I'm going to read um, the passage to you from the Good News Bible because it's a really straightforward translation and very easy to understand. I'm going to read the passage to you, then I'm going to highlight two verses that I think bear further study and further thought. Okay. There was a Jewish leader named make sure I'm in frame. There was a Jewish leader named Nicodemus who belonged to the party of the Pharisees. The Pharisees were the people who were trying to um, have Jesus arrested. One night he went to Jesus and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher sent by God. No one could perform the miracles you are doing unless God were with him. Jesus answered, I am telling you the truth. No one can see the kingdom of God unless he is born again. How can a grown man be born again? Nicodemus asked. He certainly cannot enter his mother's womb and be born a second time. I am telling you the truth, replied Jesus, that no one can enter the kingdom of God unless he is born of water and the Spirit. A person is born physically of human parents, but he is born spiritually of the Spirit. Do not be surprised because I tell you that you must all be born again. The wind blows wherever it wishes. You hear the sound it makes, but you do not know where it comes from or where it is going. It's like that with everyone who is born of the Spirit. How can this be? asked Nicodemus. Jesus answered, You are a great teacher in Israel, and you don't know this? I am telling you the truth. We speak of what we know and report what we have seen, yet none of you is willing to accept our message. You do not believe me when I tell you about the things of this world. How will you ever believe me then when I tell you about the things of heaven? And no one has ever gone up to heaven except the Son of Man who came down from heaven. As Moses lifted up the bronze snake on a pole in the desert, in the same way the Son of Man must be lifted up so that everyone who believes in him may have eternal life. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its Savior. Whoever believes in the Son is not judged, but whoever does not believe has already been judged, because he has not believed in God's only Son. This is how the judgment works. The light has come into the world, but people love the darkness rather than the light, because their deeds are evil. Anyone who does evil things hates the light, and will not come to the light because he does not want his evil deeds to be shown up. But whoever does, but whoever does what is true comes to the light in order that the light may show that what he did was in obedience to God. Okay, in this passage we see Jesus conversing with Nicodemus. And Jesus is telling Nicodemus that in order to go to heaven, you have to be born again. And Nicodemus had the reaction like, what are you talking about? You can't be born twice. Then Jesus goes on to tell Nicodemus that the first birth is your physical birth when you come out of your mom. And the second birth is when you accept Jesus as your savior, you become born of the spirit. There are two verses in this passage which are probably some of the most quoted of all time. It's John three sixteen and 17. Let me read them again. For God loved the world so much that he gave his only Son, so that everyone who believes in him may not die, but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to be its judge, but to be its Savior. That, par that portion has often been called the gospel in a nutshell. It explains why Christians believe what they do about Jesus. It tells us, why God sent his son. God sent his son to die for our sins because he loved the world so much that he was willing to give up his only son. If I had a son, I don't think I would be willing to make that sacrifice. Those of you who have children will be able to understand how uh, scary it is to think about your child being harmed. Why did God send Jesus into the world? To be its savior. Jesus isn't sitting up there on some, behind some great judge's desk with a gavel sending you to heaven and hell. He wants you to come to him and admit that you've done wrong things. And it doesn't, you don't have to be an axe murderer. And maybe you just 
got really angry at someone. Jesus wants us to come to him because God loved, loved and loves us all so much that he sent his son to die for us. So we don't have to pay for what we do in this lifetime. Jesus already paid for our sins. That's what Jesus is talking about when he's saying you must be born again. He is saying you must come to me and believe in me that I am your Savior so that you can have a new renewal, a renewal of the Spirit. Um, this verse, John 3.16, is often quoted in the King James Version, and it's, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him shall not perish, but have everlasting life. Why should we believe in God? Why should we believe in Jesus, the Son of God? So that we may have everlasting life, life eternal after we die, so that our soul may go to heaven instead of to hell. I think that this particular episode may stir up some controversy because a lot of people believe that if you're just a good person, then you'll go to heaven. But Nicodemus was a member of the Jewish ruling council. I mean, he was a good Jew. He was like as good as you can get. And Jesus still tells him that he won't see the kingdom of heaven unless he's born again, unless he believes in Jesus as his savior. If you have any questions about this Bible study, please feel free to private message me or leave comments below, and um, I'll get back to you. Thank you for watching. Bye.